Hello, this is Lee Anthony Davis here on this Sunday night. Uh, I'm making this uh, video to put the answers up. So if you did yesterday's questions, uh, here are the 20 answers to go with them. So I'll start off with question one. So have you got your pen and paper handy? Right, just to let you know at nine o'clock, I'll be coming back on here on YouTube to do the second set of questions. That's part two of my Super Doctor Who quiz, if you didn't know. Right, so here we go with, the, with yesterday's questions and here's the answers to them. Right, remember, I asked you a question, uh, basically, who, uh, apart from Joe Patterson, how many fictional prime ministers have been seen and heard in Doctor Who? Uh, and the answer is three. Uh, one was Harriet Jones, Harold Saxon, but he was resurrected. Uh, well, that's for another question, sorry. <laughs> Forgive me. Uh, Harold Saxon, uh, alias the Master, and Jeremy, uh, who you didn't see, but it was that one in the Green Death where the Brigadier spoke to one of their ministers and you could hear the voice. That was a prime minister. That was meant to be Jeremy, but you uh, didn't see him. But he was uh, mentioned by name. And uh, so the answer is free uh, if you include uh, J uh, Joe Patterson, who was seen. So it's actually free because Jeremy wasn't. So the answer is free. Three prime ministers were in the actual show, uh, the actual series. Right, OK, moving on to question two. After that convoluted uh, too much information crap. <laughs> uh, Question two, uh, including Joe Patterson, again, uh, how many Prime Ministers have died in office in Doctor Who? Uh, and the answer, again, is three. Uh, as I've mentioned, Harold Saxon, even though he was resurrected, he died, obviously, but he, he was re resurrected later on uh, in the uh, end of time. Uh, also, uh, Joe, Patterson, Joe, pa uh, Joe Patterson, as you know, and the body that fell out of the cabinet in uh, Aliens of London. Remember when uh, Harriet Jones and, uh, uh, what's her name now? Uh, Godfather, I'm stupid. I am absolutely stupid. Uh, Rose Tyler, who <laughs> told me, I've got there in the end. Uh, they opened the cabinet and this body fell fell out and it was actually the Prime Minister. He was killed by a Slovene. Well, uh, so there you have it. So that's free. The answer is free. Right, moving on to question three. Who is the only real life Prime Minister to appear as a character in Doctor Who? The answer is Winston Churchill, played by Ian McNeese. Uh, and he appeared in uh, Victory of the Daleks. That's the Matt Smith. Uh, I think it's Matt Smith's first season. I think it was the third adventure from the first season of Matt Smith. So the answer is Winston Churchill. Question four. Which real life Prime Minister drank the Doctor under the table? Uh, the answer is... Uh, Harold Lloyd George. Uh, apparently, uh, this is... Uh, mentioned by Chris Eccleston as the Doctor in uh, uh, Aliens in London when they were cornered into the cabinet room and uh, they, uh, they, uh, they had no way out. They just, uh, sh the big metal doors shot and everything. Uh, and he was talking about, uh, I drank uh, how I drank Harold Lloyd George onto the table once or something. I can't remember what he said. But anyway, that's the answer. Uh, sorry, not Harold, David Lloyd George. What an idiot I am. I can't even remember my own questions or my own answers. I'm sorry about that. So uh, the answer is David Lloyd George in Aliens of London. Right, question five. Who was the first real Prime Minister to be mentioned by name in Doctor Who? Uh, the answer is Bona Law was mentioned in the horror of Fan Rock. Okay, I know it's a bit of a difficult one, but, you know, I've got to throw them in. Uh, question six, uh, who, uh, who's the most recent real life Prime Minister to be mentioned on screen? Uh, the answer is Tony Blair, he was mentioned by, uh, let me see, I've got the answer here, uh, he was mentioned by Mickey uh, in Rise of the Cybermen. Right, question seven, which episode was partly set in an unnamed location that might have been Liverpool judging by the accents? Well, the answer is the Beast of, uh, the Feast of Beast, the Feast of Stephen. The Merseyside setting was a remnant of the plan to make this 
episode, a crossover with said cars. Even though program was set in the fictional new town based on Kirby. So there you have it. Right, question eight. Which space facility, including bulkheads, built in Liverpool? Which space facility included bulkheads built in Liverpool? The answer, believe it or not, is Bowie Base 1 in Waters and Mars. There you have it. So, how are you doing so far? We've, we've reached uh, question 9. So, are you doing well or are you doing crap like me? <laughs> I'm not surprised you're doing crap because I'm reading them out. I'm really terrible at these quiz, quiz uh, questions and getting everything synchronized but anyway that's uh but i'm sure you're doing better than i am uh right question nine here we go uh this one's about a vodafone advert and this was a 1996 vodafone advert set in liverpool uh linked the words of doctor who and which other cult american tv drama the answer is twin peaks uh and uh Basically, uh, it was Carl McLaughlin who played the agent investigating a possible time experiment in a garage near one use by a character played by John Pertwee, believe it or not. He was in that. Yes, he was. Uh, but he didn't play him as a doctor. He played him as another character. Uh, you've got to look at the video. Uh, I think it's on YouTube somewhere. You can find it. I'm telling you. He's there. Uh, so anyway, that's the answer to question nine. Moving on to question ten. We're halfway through this. Thank God. Uh, let me just see where uh, where we are. Uh, yeah, right. You ready? Name the four Liverpool-born uh, actors who were TARDIS travellers, and who out of what? Well, shall I say which one of them actually mentioned the city on screen, a hometown on screen? Uh, the answer to the four first: Elizabeth Sladen, Maureen O'Brien, Paul McGann. And uh, Tom Baker, of course, Tom Baker. Uh, they all came from Liverpool. They were actually from Liverpool. So, uh, and the one that mentioned uh, a hometown city was Maureen O'Brien, who played Vicky. And I think it was uh, in yes, it was. It was in the chase, uh, in the adventure called the chase. She mentioned her hometown, mentioned the hometown city of Liverpool. I think it's when the when that uh, thing uh, the doctor found uh, from from the adventure before. Uh, it was like a, I don't know what they called it, some silly thing. It was like a, a television, round, massive thing, and you could uh, look into past events, you know, sort of thing. And and uh, they got the Beatles on there as well, doing uh, She's Got a Ticket to Ride or something. Uh, but that's, uh, and then she mentioned uh, Liverpool, uh, hometown city, that's where it came from. So anyway, I know it's a bit of a dark question, but I thought I'd got to answer it. Uh, so how, uh, how did you do with that one? <laughs> right here we go moving on which northern town yeah that's the one which northern town in uh is the birthplace of two companions one on tv and one in one that was on the audio version and the answer and the answer is uh the, the town is blackpool and these two characters officially came from blackpool uh, the audio version character is Lucy Lucy Miller, and the uh, obviously the TV character was Clara Oswald. So there you go. There's the answer. Right, moving on to question twelve. Which story is partly set in a eleventh century monastery in Northumberland? And the answer is the Time Meddler. Okay, the Time Meddler is the answer. Right. Question uh, 13. Which story is partly set in the 13th century monastery in Cumbria? Uh, obviously, it's modern day who. And uh, the answer is The Bells of St. John. That's Matt Smith's uh, adventure. I think it was the first season of Clara Oswald. Uh, so anyway, the second adventure, I think it was. So anyway, moving on to question 14. Here we go. Which of a football ground can be seen in a 13th Doctor episode? Which of a football ground can be seen in a 13th Doctor episode? That's uh, Jodie Whittaker. And the answer is Bramall Lane, Sheffield United. The home of Sheffield United, obviously. So that's the answer to that. 
Right, moving on to question 15. In which stories were the following football clubs mentioned? Uh, like, uh, for instance, it, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna emphasise something here. Yesterday, I put it as A, B, and C. It isn't. It's a question altogether. I do apologise. So give yourself two points for this because I uh, didn't read the question properly. So I do apologise. But here we go. Uh, the uh, what I want to know is which stories were the following football clubs mentioned? Uh, Manchester City, Charlton Athletic, and West Ham United. It's a two-parter. So uh, I'll come to that in a minute. Uh, the answer is. Praxis uh, was the first one, that was uh, Manchester City. Uh, the second one, uh, Charlton Athletic, was the Happiness Patrol, as Ace uh, was an advent support of Charlton Athletic. And thirdly, uh, the, uh, the next one, which is West Ham United, uh, Donna Noble is a supporter, and she used to make references of going to the matches every Saturday to uh, the doctor, <laughs> something like that. Uh, so anyway, that's the answer to that. Uh, right, 15B, here we go. This is a two-part question. I was just looking for that. So here we go. Uh, and in which story did Yad imagine herself a former Liverpool goalkeeper? Well, it was in that whole awful story, you know, that little pating thing. Uh, the San Andrea Conundrum. What a, what a title. Uh, yeah, that's the actual adventure. It was it, she mentioned it, and she talked about this dream she had or something. To I think it was Ryan or something. You know, there's a lot of exposition going on there. You know, not a lot of action. <laughs> so anyway, there you go. Uh, right, moving on to question sixteen. In which two stories can the Beatles? Yes, the Beatles be heard playing on jukeboxes. And can you name the three story? Uh, can you name those stories in the broadcasting television episodes? Uh, one was, uh, I believe, uh, because there was three three songs, weren't there? Uh, but I'm not going to go into that. I'll just say I'll give you give you three points, right? Because I never really researched that one, so I do apologise. But the answer that I'm looking for. Uh, question 17. Uh, wait a minute, I've got it here. Evil of the Daleks, and uh, the other story it was mentioned was Remembrance of the Daleks. Right, and uh, the answer, uh, those three Beatle records, was Paperback Writer, Do You Want to Know a Secret, and A Taste of Honey. Okay? That was that was meant to be question 17, by the way. It was actually part of question... No, it's actually question 17. I've read two questions at once now. Sorry. It should have been. So I'll, I'll, I'll emphasise again so you don't get confused. In which two stories can the Beatles be heard playing on the jukebox? The ones I've just mentioned, uh, Evil of the Daleks and Remembrance of the Daleks. And the question 17 was, uh, and can you name those three Beatles songs? Uh, easy. I've just mentioned it. Playback... Uh, paperback writer, do you want to know secret and the taste of honey? Okay, moving on to question 18, thank God. Uh, and here we go. In which st story is the Beatles album, Rubber Soul, conspicuously uh, not played? And the story is Spyfall. That's Jodie Whittaker's uh, second season adventure. The start of it, that is. Uh, sort of uh, a bit of a copycat, you know, uh, a reference to another film, perhaps. Uh, so anyway, that's question 18. Question 19. Uh, in which stories do the Beatles songs A Hard Day's Night and Here Comes the Song crop up in the Doctor's Dialogue? And the answer is Ghostlight and 42. So that's one from the classics, one from the modern. And finally, we reach the 20th question. And here we go. Who want misquoted the lyrics to I Am A Warus? That is a Beatles song, by the way, if you didn't know. And the answer is Joe Grant in The Three Doctors. There you go. That's 20 questions. I've got another 20 questions for you later on at 9 o'clock. So tune in for that. Make sure you've got a pen and paper, Andy, because you need to write those questions down. If I'm bad as a presenter, bad as a projector, and bad as a talker as I am, you'll need a pen and paper. So anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the uh, the answers to the so-called so suspected questions I've been dishing out. But uh, I'll be back with another 20 questions 
at nine o'clock as I've mentioned. So thank you for watching and I'll promote, uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll let everyone know when it's gone up, you know, uh, on Twitter, on Facebook, uh, and Instagram. So look out for that. So I'll probably post it up about 10 minutes to let people know when this is going out. So anyway, good luck to you. Uh, so far, 20, 20 down, another 80 to go. So look after yourselves. I'll see you later on. Bye for now.